All right, Shabbat Shalom to the 144,000 and the one third of the nation of Yasha Allah, Israel. First of all, Kal Halal Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Waha Rakaha Kodash. Double honor has been transferred unto the elder apostles of the Great Millstone, GMS, who continue to rule well and teach us this truth through the Spirit and are our true teachers for the nation of Israel on earth today, whether you believe it or not, or accept it or not. Peace, blessings and salutations goes out to the Achim, pushing this 100% gospel, this good news, the world over, in sincerity and in truth, in hopes that it may edify the elect lambs of Yahweh, while Yahweh shy. To you few sincere sisters who are doing the right thing, to you I say Shalom, wa Adwan Rataza, which means Lord willing, you know, so Lord willing, this Day of Atonement lesson is edifying. Okay. And, uh, you know, it is the Day of Atonement. Alright. And this is a very high holy day. Alright. A solemn day. A serious day. Alright. Coming into the, you know, the seventh month via the lunar calendar. Alright. Which is how we observe our times and seasons according to the Bible. Alright. As Hebrew Israelites. Okay. So, uh. That start in the book of Leviticus chapter 23 and look at the subheading the day of atonement all right Leviticus chapter 23 verse 26 and Yahweh spake unto Moses saying also on the tenth day of this seventh month there shall be a day of atonement it shall be an holy convocation unto you and you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh okay and you shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of your atonement to make an atonement for you before Yahweh your power. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. All right. So um, <clears throat> the offering made by fire is basically you, all right, presenting your body as a living sacrifice, man. All right, and it's also a, a, a Sabbath. It's also a Shabbat day of rest. Okay. Verse thirty again, and whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. All right, <clears throat> and you know this was during the ancient time. All right, not now since obviously we're in captivity. All right, under these uh, heathens, and more specifically Esau, Eden, the so-called white man. All right. Let's uh, get the book of Yeshaya, or Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 5, okay, which reads, Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast, and an acceptable day to the Lord, Yahweh? Alright. So obviously we're not in our kingdom, man. We're not in our rulership. We're still in captivity, all right. We're still at the bottom, all right. So you know this is the Lord humbling us, all right? Humbling you, all right. Verse six: Is it not this? Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke, all right? Meaning to destroy these, all right, strongholds of those false religions and ideologies case in point uh, Christianity and Islam all right and various other false philosophies of the world that we're caught up in all right loosed band loose the bands of wickedness all right to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free that you may break every yoke man so what is the heavy burden? Alright. It's of captivity. Alright. You can get that in Baruch. Alright. <clears throat> you know, because we, you know, we're meant to spiritually and mentally depart from this place. Alright. So, uh, Baruch. Uh, Do it this way. That's a 
got yet this gear. That's it. Baruch chapter 3, verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where you have scattered us for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Adawan our power. Alright. So, <clears throat> you know, we're still yet this day in our captivity, man. Alright. Subject to payments. Okay. And again, we're breaking those yokes by mentally and spiritually departing from this place. It tells you in Micah 2 and 10. All right? And wherever else we were scattered to other people. All right? Let's get uh, Matthew. Let's put the book of Matthew. <sighs> Matthew chapter 3 and 11. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. Alright. And this is John the Baptist talking. Alright. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire okay so you know this fire like it mentioned in uh, Leviticus 23 all right about an offering made by fire all right that's again you presenting your body as a living sacrifice okay and uh, the book of Romans tells us that Romans chapter 12 from the top which reads I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of Yahweh that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto Yahweh which is your reasonable service okay and that's what you know the day of atonement you know is about a day of sacrifice all right verse 2 and be not conformed to this world but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh okay so again a day of sacrifice just like us going out on the highways and hedges, presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, all right, prophesying the downfall of Esau and these heathen nations that are joined hand in hand with him, all right, because they had a hand in our downfall, okay. Your reasonable service, okay. So it's our reasonable reasonable service to do this on the day of atonement, okay. And Lord willing, it's our last one, all right. Because this is an opportunity for, you know, Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, alright, who gave us grace, you know, to afflict our souls, alright, which is a godly cleanse, alright, to help us draw near to our power, alright, and fasting is doing just that, okay, this is the 24 hour, you know, dry fast, alright, so no food and drink for 24 hours, man, no entertainment, alright, no films, no TV, alright, for 24 hours, man. No coitus for 24 hours, all right? Just wear humble clothing, all right? And just, you know, try to observe, you know, this day as best you can, man. All right, because some of you may have to, you know, go to work, all right? Being in captivity, man. All right. Let's get uh, <clears throat> Revelation chapter 3. These are the words of Yahushua himself, all right? Since it's written in red, okay? Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that you may be rich, and white raiment, that you may be clothed, and that the, same, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that you may see. Okay? So the trial and tribulations, all right, and adversities and the afflictions, all right, and the ways, and of course, you know, rehearsing the righteous act, all right, rehearsing the righteous act, which is, uh, you know, that's in the book of Judges, chapter 5 and verse 11, all right, which the Lord, 
you know, gave to us his grace to return back to him. All right. You know, we, we're going through that that purging fire. All right. The trials and tribulations, man. That's you know, that's that uh, fire to spiritually purge us, man. All right, to be tried. Okay. Because yeah, we're all going through our, you know, our hell. All right, we have to be tried and tested, all right, to see if we're worthy of Yahweh Hashem and the elect are going through that that process. All right. Uh, let's get the book of Sirach, chapter two, and verse five, which reads, "For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity." All right, and the way you make actual gold pure, all right, is by you know that that being uh, heated up, all right, and purging the impuri impurities out of it, man. Okay, so it's shiny, refined, all right, and ultimately better. <laughs> you know, it's in that pure state. Okay, so you know you can relate that to us afflicting our souls, all right, and going into that furnace of adversity. Okay, twenty-four hour dry fast is afflicting your soul. All right. Let's go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 6, which reads, As gold in the furnace hath he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. <clears throat> so the burnt offering, right, like it says once again in Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 26, is us presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice. All right. Okay. Just want to drive that point home, man. All right. Repetition, repetition is the father of skill. All right. Okay. Now, as a side note, all right, <clears throat> before the sun goes down, all right, before the day of atonement begins, okay, you know, you you wash your face and you anoint your head with the uh, olive oil, okay, you can use coconut oil or avocado oil or hemp oil, all right, but of course, pray over it first, all right, and always try your best to get, you know, a top quality oil or, you know, <clears throat> a decent one, okay, to grease your scalp with, all right, and pray over it first, okay. Tells you that in Matthew. Let's get that. Matthew six and sixteen. And this is uh, again Yahweh I speaking, which reads: Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily, which means truly, I say unto you, they have their reward. You know, and that reminds me of how, uh, you know, how Muslim people conduct their fast because they, they let everyone know, especially when it, they come to their folly day of Ramadan, right? <laughs> you know, they <laughs> they do it to be seen of men, so that's their reward, <laughs> all right? Verse 17 says, But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that you appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, Yahweh, which is in secret, and thy father, Yahweh, which sees in secret shall reward you openly. All right. So you know, this fast is private between you and the Most High. Okay. No need to make it public. All right. And you know, the more we practice fasting, the more we discipline ourselves and tap back into the spirit, man. Okay. Because the Lord opens up your spirit more. All right. Good form of discipline. And a good habit too. Alright, not a lot of people. Alright, especially these worldly people, not a lot of them practice it. Over there in Babylon the Great, not a lot of them practice it neither. <laughs> Isaiah, back to Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 5. Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Adawan Yahweh? Alright, let's get uh, Zechariah chapter 2, uh, verse 6. Okay, which reads, Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Adawan Yahweh, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Adawan Yahweh. Deliver thyself, O Zion, or in the Hebrew, to thy one, right, which means monument or memorial. To the Lord, because the Lord remember His children, 
the chosen people, the Israelites, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and Seminole Indians, West Indians, and Haitians, and the Israelite foreigners, speckled birds, all right, for this peculiar treasure and people, all right, we're a monument to the Most High, all right, so deliver thyself, O Taziwan, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon, all right, so, um, again, this is the Most High, you know, cleansing and renewing our soul spiritually and mentally, okay, and that's what we need. And that's what grace is here for. You know. Right now we're under grace. Alright. But just because we're under grace, it doesn't mean that we just, you know, neglect to rehearse this righteous act. Alright. Just one day in a year. Okay. And they're already speeding up these times anyway. Alright. So let's get the book of Romans chapter 6. Okay. Bear with me. Babaku Shah. Romans chapter 6. And verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Alright, now we're in this grace period. Alright. You know, to get right. Verse 15. Here's the point. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. Yahweh forbid. Right, just because... You know, we're under grace. We don't have the license to sin, man. Doesn't mean that we, we should just do as we please. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, that's it there, really. Alright. And, you know, when, when the Day of Atonement ends, okay, and when you break your fast, don't just gobble down water. Alright, like that. Because, it, you know, that'll just go straight to your stomach and right out through you. <laughs> okay. You know, take sips. Alright. And it's healthier to do so. Alright, and don't eat a heavy meal when you break your fast. Just have something small like fruit, you know, or like a mixed fruit bowl, or walnuts, dates, you know, watermelon, you know, something like that, man, because, you know, it eases your body back into, you know, the swing of things. Alright. So, yeah. So, numbers. Go Numbers chapter 29. Numbers chapter 29, verse 7. And again, it's, you know, reinforced, re emphasized, okay, repeated. So, Numbers 29, verse 7. And you shall have on the tenth day of this seventh month an holy convocation, and you shall afflict your souls. You shall not do any work therein. Okay. And let's get the Hebrew word for uh, afflict. Okay. Which at the top is the Strong's H6031 number. Alright, and the Hebrew word is Aina. Alright. Which goes into to be occupied, be busied with. Okay. You know, to afflict, oppress, humble. Alright, that's how we show humble, uh, you know, humiliation. That's how we, we show our humbleness, right? Okay, by denying, denying the, the flesh. Right? Denying food, provision. You know, water, things that we need on a daily basis, man. Right, to bow down, to oppress, to become low, that's right. Right, being in that meek lower state, man. To humble oneself, bow down, to be afflicted, be humble. Right, to weaken oneself. Okay. You know, while, while the flesh is being weakened, the spirit is being strengthened. So that's the balance behind that. To be humiliated, and wasn't Yahweh Shai humiliated? All right, even before he was crucified. All right, this isn't a, you know, a happy, happy time to be in, man. Okay, because we're begging Yahweh Hashem Shai for, for our sins that we committed, in our past lives, in our current lives, and in and in the truth as well, man. Okay. In fact, let's actually get the word, uh, you know, atone or atonement on etymon line, etymology. Dictionary, okay. So, atone, the verb, from Etymon line, 1590s, be in harmony, agree, be in accordance, okay.
got to be in one accord with you. How about you, man? Alright. And the word atonement, at one meant, meaning, you know, at one mind. Meant meaning mind. Alright. So our mind is single and, and focused on, on you. How about you, man? Okay. The meaning make up for errors or deficiencies. Alright. From 1660s, is from 1660s. Uh, it says that of make reparations is from 1680s. And that's right, man. You know, so <clears throat> you know, begging the Lord, right, pleading to the Lord, you know, to figure to forgive our our shortcomings in our past lives. Okay. You know, making spiritual reparations or spiritual repairs between us and the Lord. Okay, which was already done with Yahweh Shai when he died. <laughs> as well condition of being at one with others a sense now obsolete from a tone and meant the <laughs> and didn't we wrong the lord didn't we sin against our power hence the reason why we're driven into you know captivity captivity to this very day man Okay, injury for appreciation of an offended party. Okay, yeah, All right. We were disobedient and wicked as a nation to Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. Okay, that's why we're suffering the curses and <clears throat> you know going through hell. All right. Uh, let's get that in the book of Hebrews as well. All right. Uh, Hebrews chapter 7. We'll go to verse 26, which reads For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, Undefiled, which is Yahweh Shai, of course, separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens. Okay, and Yahweh Shai came humbly, all right, and as 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 Yahweh Shai, okay, himself he was perfect. Okay, he was that spotless lamb man. All right, he was sinless. Verse twenty-seven: Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice? first for his own sins and then for the people's for this he did once when he offered up himself all right and uh you know back then all right you'd go to a levitical priest to offer a sacrifice for your sins all right but that was done away with when you know yahweh shai became our sacrifice and got and got crucified all right he got crucified once and once only all right Verse 28, for the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. Alright. That's right, man. So, you know, he died for his own sins first. Alright, when he was King Solomon, when he went off then. And when he was Adam, and he fell as Adam as well. Okay. You know, and ultimately, you know, <clears throat> you know, we we look to be beamed up, right, into the chariots, man. We, you know, Lord willing, we're part of the elect, right. That's the goal to escape the second death, man. That's coming, okay. You know.
but let's get Baruch again. All right, with the scribe of Jeremiah. All right, you can read that in Jeremiah chapter 36. All right, and the name Baruch can, just means bless. In the Hebrew, it's Barak. All right, so uh, let's get that right now. Where am I going? Ah, oh, there you are. Baruch chapter 4, verse 6 reads You were sold to the nations not for your destruction, but because you moved Yahweh to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemies. Okay, and when Yahweh Shai returns, when these curses will be lifted up off of us okay that's why we're hastening the day all right that's why we're hastening the day you know of his of his return man okay Bear with me a minute. Alright. That's it. I forgot where. Oh, yeah, Romans. Let's go to the book of Romans. Alright. Okay. Because these prophecies are moving quick, man, as well. Alright. <clears throat> yeah, just jumping between the two apps because you know you can get into the, the Hebrew and the Greek words in the blue letter Bible. I know I'm a bit all over the place, but Lord willing, this is edifying. Okay, going through certain notes with me as well while I get this up. So, Romans chapter 5 and verse 9, which reads. Much more than being now justified by his blood, right, Yahushai, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Okay, and not everybody will, de will be delivered and saved, right, by Yahushai in that day. Okay, but the elect of the nation of Yahshua Allah will be delivered and saved, right, when that day comes. Verse 10 For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to Yahweh by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Okay. That's why we must acknowledge the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai because without him, all right, we could never be delivered, all right, in these last days, all right. Let's get the Greek word for reconciled, all right. It's uh, Strong's G2644, and the Greek word is pronounced. Strong's G2644. Katalasso. It says to reconcile those who are at variance, return to favor with, be reconciled to one. Alright. And you know, at one point, you know, you know, you have a cast, cast us off as his people. Alright. But through his son, he's reconciled us back, man. Okay. Starting with the elect. It says to change, exchange his coins for others of equivalent value to receive one into favor. All right, and Yahweh shall bore the sins of the nation, nation of Israel. All right. So Romans five and verse eleven. All right, and not only so, but we also joy in Yahweh through our other one, Yahweh Hamashiach, by whom we have now received the atonement. All right. Let's get that word atonement in the Greek as well. And that's uh, the Strong's number G2643, and it's pronounced Strong's G2643, Katalage, Katalage. Goes into uh, exchange of the business of money, changes, exchanging equivalent values, adjustment of a difference, reconciliation, restoration to favor. All right, in the New Testament of the restoration of the favor of God to sinners that repent, put their trust in the ex. The expiatory death of of uh, Amashiach. 
right? And it's only the elect of the nation of Israel, right? It's going to be delivered on this side round, man. Let's get the root word, which is G2644. It's pronounced Strong's G2644. Katalasso. Katalasso. But yeah, turn to favor with change coin for others. Yeah, reconcile, man. I like to bring back. All right. So, you know, Yahusha basically did the heavy lifting for us, you know, through his sacrifice. But again, you know, we're performing, you know, these rehearses and righteous acts through faith and fear. All right. Which is important. All right. In the most time, man. Okay. Let's get a uh, second Corinthians chapter five verse eighteen. And it reads, And all things are of Yahweh, who has reconciled us to himself by Yahweh Hamashiach, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Okay. And without Yahweh's sacrifice we wouldn't even be learning this wisdom, knowledge and understanding of the scriptures, let alone even teaching it, okay? Right, that's also, you know, why we know these deep, dark mysteries and secrets of the Bible, okay, that the world cannot comprehend. These other people don't know this, right? And we, which is, you know, Haraka Kodash, the Holy Spirit, all right? Verse 19, to wit, that Yahweh was in Hamashiach, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Alright. And this is where mercy comes in. In a nutshell, that's a summary summary right there. Alright. Verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Hamashiach, as though Yahweh did beseech you by us. We pray you in we pray you in Yahweh Shai stead. Be you reconciled to Yahweh. All right, and we are representatives of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, spreading and teaching the gospel, which is the good news, man. All right, and defending the gospel, all right, because Yahushai ultimately comes in the volume of the book. It is written of him, okay. And again, man, we went off for our wickedness and disobedience, okay. That's why we are returning back and serving the Lord, okay. Verse twenty-one: For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of Yahweh in him. Alright? Because, again, as Yahweh, was perfect, man. He took on our, you know, iniquity. Alright? And paid for our sin, man. Okay. Let's get a... Uh, Micaiah. Sorry, not Micaiah. You need to say that. Micah. Micah chapter 7 and verse 9, which reads, I will bear the indignation, okay, and the, indi the indignation is the righteous anger of the Most High, alright, I will bear the indignation of the Adawan Yahweh, because I have sinned against him, until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me, he will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness, okay, you know, the Lord was angry with us, alright, that's why he drove us into captivity, right, as a people under these heathens, all right, okay, and you know, <clears throat> we understand through reincarnation that our spirits come back every three or four generations, all right, so we are our forefathers coming back, all right, and we are pleading our cause, you know, to the Lord, okay, you know, Christianity, Christianity doesn't teach you this, you ain't going to learn this in church. Right, and Christianity will never, ever teach you this. Right, these false, wicked, pagan religions. Right, <laughs> a, a, a death snare. Right, to our people. Okay. <laughs> and Christianity has nothing to do with the Bible. Right, they probably don't even know about this high holiday. Right, and if you mention it to them, they won't take you serious at all. Okay, that's the average. Christian for you. <laughs> okay. Let's get uh, Leviticus chapter 16. We'll go verse 20, which reads, And when he has made 
an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar he shall bring the live goat okay verse 21 and Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Yasha'Allah and all their transgressions in all their sins putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness okay okay because sin we know sin is transgression of the law and who were the law statutes and commandments given to the nation of israel via moses okay and aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of israel and all their transgressions in all their sins putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness okay that's that scapegoat all right Verse 22, and the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. All right, so Yahusha was, you know, was that scapegoat, basically. Let's get the book of uh, St. John, chapter 19, and verse 16. All right, subheading right there, the crucifixion, okay. Verse 16, Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Yahusha and led him away. Verse 17, And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Golgotha. 18, Where they crucified him and two other with him on either side, one, and Yahusha in the midst, in the middle. All right. There you go. Let's get Hebrews again. Hebrews chapter 13. And verse 12. Wherefore, Yahusha also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. Reproach, sorry. Alright, so Yahusha was led out of the city all right, to bear the sins of Yahshua Allah. Alright, as well as to make atonement. To the sins he committed in his past lives, all right? Like when it was Adam, you know, King Solomon, all right? Because again, when he came as Yahusha himself, all right, he lived a, sin a sinless life, all right? And he fulfilled the law perfectly, okay? 100%. Okay, he made that perfect sacrifice, all right? Let's get that in NLT. So Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12, in the New Living Translation. Which reads, So also Yahushai suffered and died outside the city gates to make his people holy by means of his own blood. Get verse 13 in the same translation. So let us go out to him outside the camp and bear the disgrace he bore. Alright. Okay. We'll go verse 14. KJV again. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Alright. Yeah, this place ain't our rest, man. You know. America's... And Esau Edom's society, his kingdom, his queendom, right? This corrupt system, right? That's getting ready to be destroyed, man. And two thirds of you Israelites in Babylon the Great think America will just keep going on and on and on. But, you know, you are sadly misled, man. Because, you know, mentally you adopt, and physically, pretty much, you know, you adopt Esau's ways about yourself, okay? Right? And, you know, a lot of our people, man, filled with pride, just like he saw himself, man, envying the ways of of the oppressor, okay? Thinking America, you know, these these Edomites, they think, you know, America's go, going to go on and on and on. They gen, generally believe that they're going to just keep ruling on and on and on, all right? It says that in the, the scripture right here in Psalms. Chapter 49, verse 11. Right, really, it's going into Esau, right? Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names, right? So this devil thinks he's going to be in perpetual rulership forever, man. Okay? That's why he also likes to set dates. You know, he likes to set a certain date. Oh, by 2045, so-and-so will happen. This will happen. You know? Because he, he thinks he's going to continue to rule. Right? Okay, but Yahab Hashim Hashim, man, he's going to strip away the power from this man. Okay. 
just like how these devils, <laughs> you know, they they thought that the uh, <laughs> this the said that the the Titanic <laughs> would never you know sink, and you know look what happened to that. It's pride right there, man. All right. Okay. So um, I know I'm jumping around, but you know these are the benefits of fasting from Healthline.com, man. Right, so I'll just go through certain things. Right, you can read this in your own time and all that. Right, and look at the look at the uh, what it's good for: brain function, heart health, longevity, increased you know lifespan. Promotes blood sugar by controlling. Sorry, promotes blood sugar control by reducing insulin resistance. Promotes better health by fighting inflammation. Alright, you know, because constantly eating, you know, every few hours isn't good for you, man. That's more energy on the body, All right? Especially, you know, desserts and, you know, sweet things, sugary things, man. That's that's a road to, to diabetes right there. Alright, improve blood pressure. Alright, it lowers blood pressure as well. Okay, fights cholesterol levels. Boost brain function and may prevent neurodegenerative disorders. That's right, you're more clear minded right, when you fast as well. Okay. You even get a, a, a certain energy boost as well. AIDS weight loss by limiting calorie intake and boosting metabolism. Right. So, yeah. First, could extend longevity. You know. So, I certain, you know groups of people especially in like a uh, even in japan uh, there's a certain uh, community that they adopt a, a i believe it's a mediterranean diet if i, if I remember correctly they adopt a certain diet and, and the fast as well all right and they tend to live a lot longer all right I remember look, uh, coming across that at one point all right it says may aid in cancer prevention as well increase you know, it says increased effectiveness of chemotherapy. All right, chemotherapy, man. That's that's not a good way to treat cancer, man. All right. So a lot of these uh, diseases, all right? Which the word disease means, you know, not at ease. The body's not at ease. All right. A lot of ways to treat these diseases can be done through, you know, mainly through your diet and fasting, and of course exercising as well. Okay. Right, you know, and even item intermittent fasting. Okay, so of course supports weight loss. All right. There we go intermittent fasting. You know, now more so than ever, man, we need to be feeding to the spirit, all right, and denying the flesh and its desires, its lusts and cravings, all right, because at the end of the day, we are in a spiritual war, all right, and our flesh constantly seeks to rule over us, man, it's that, you know, the fight, okay, the flesh is weak, but, the, you know, the spirit is willing, all right, and fasting quenches those urges, okay, all right. You know, so Lord willing, this day of atonement lesson was uh, clear, uplifting, and edifying. All right. So uh, with that, my wife, blah blah blah, wa shabbat shalom.